to the GCN Show, where we are in physical isolation in Toronto, Canada. Hi guys! Welcome to the GCN Show. This week, although we're pretty bummed out about coronavirus, to say the very least, yeah, coming up are six things that we're really not missing about normal bike riding. Plus, we have got some cycling superheroes, some shocking news about Mathieu van der Poel, and all of our usuals as well. This week in the world of cycling, we learned that self-isolation is really starting to take its toll. Hank decided to ride on Zwift for 24 hours. Yeah, and when we say 24 hours, we mean 24 hours. Having decided to rest for 40 minutes during the actual 24 hour period, and we're not entirely sure why he did need to do that, but still, he at least then added that 40 minutes onto the end. As you do. So in total, 785 <laughs> kilometers. I haven't actually heard from him since, so I hope he's all right. Yes, I believe so, Dan. I think he's just having to sleep on his front, but uh, but otherwise <laughs> he is all right. Anyway, he at least fared better than Matthew van der Poel, the world's best bike rider, who is the world cyclocross champ, the world's best mountain biker, and also probably one of the world's best road riders as well, got soundly beaten in the Ronde van Zwift at the weekend, and by, dun dun dun, a triathlete. That's right, uh, former world long course triathlon champion Lionel Sanders, who's apparently no relation to Colonel Sanders of KFC fame, soundly beat not only Matthew van der Poel, but also the entire Alpes and Phoenix team, seven other pro teams, Maurizio Fondriest, the former world champion, and if that wasn't enough, he also beat Cy Richardson. Yeah, he didn't have to try very hard at all to beat me, but still, fair play to Colonel Sanders. He was looking remarkably impressive. And it made me think, actually, maybe if you don't ask triathletes to go round corners, perhaps they're actually really quite good bike riders. Well, there's a thought for you. Yeah. Triathlete versus roadie on Zwift. <laughs> yeah. By the way, can I just add in uh, that it definitely wasn't my fault at all that Van der Poel uh, got dropped from that first split <laughs> on the first climb, uh, even though I might have got dropped just in front of him. I'd Definitely wasn't me. Well, are you sure about that? Because it's quite a narrow course, that one. He might have been stuck behind your ankles. <laughs> I have got fat Zwift ankles as well as real ones. <laughs> oh, true. Yeah, yeah, you chose an avatar with thinner ankles. I did, sure. yeah, absolutely did. Anyway, at least he didn't suffer the same fate as fellow triathlete Marinda Carfre. She was actually leading her virtual race until the point at which her husband walked in, tripped over the power cable and completely ruined it. <laughs> Oh, that's terrible, isn't it? It's a bit like the virtual equivalent of getting run over by your own team car. Uh, <laughs> which brings us neatly on, actually, to something we've been thinking about this week, which is things that we're not missing about normal bike riding at the moment. That's right. So with all racing currently cancelled, to the best of our knowledge at least, no pro rider has crashed or indeed broken any bones or taken any skin off. Now admittedly, they would much rather be competing and we would much rather be watching them, but that at least is one positive of this. But when we started thinking about it even more, we realised that there are other things that we're not missing since being in social isolation. Well yeah, should we start with a big one? You're not going to get dropped anymore because there's no one to drop you. The best thing about riding by yourself is there's no one else there to make you feel unfair or make you feel slow. You are the first to arrive everywhere. You've either got a very short or a very selective memory side because you were made to look quite slow in that race on the Sunday. <laughs> yeah, right, but yes, point. outside that is true. But on the flip side, what it does mean is that there are no wheel suckers to annoy you anymore. No, nobody to just wordlessly sit on your back wheel and profit from all your hard work, invading your personal space and then crashing into the back of you when you have to brake suddenly at a junction. Exactly. So I think we might never ever do group rides again, Sai, si, because no. let's not forget, sometimes when you're on a group ride, you end up riding next to someone that is incredibly dull for mile after mile after mile and there's no way to escape them. True that. Yeah, I mean, I'd almost forgotten that bit because it's been such a long time since we've been riding together, Dan. Now, one thing I didn't think I would miss is bad weather, but actually, ironically enough, there's hardly been a single drop of rain here in the UK since this whole isolation lockdown thing started. 
I know. It is ironic, isn't it? I don't know what the chances are of having bright blue skies every day for two weeks in the UK are, but they've got to be slim, particularly when combined with lockdown. Although I'm betting that you've had a few tropical storms inside on your trainers are like hitting your wahoo mat. <laughs> Yeah, one or two, a bit of localised flooding, perhaps. Um, now, of course, lots of people are still riding outside, and rightly so. And when you do so, you get hit with another unexpected bonus, and that is the massively reduced traffic levels. Apparently, here in the UK, it's down to the levels of the 1950s, and pollution levels have dropped accordingly as well. Mm, jokes aside, that is quite incredible, isn't it? And that's definitely something that I wish does not go back to how it was before. Yeah, yeah, that is true. I do really miss riding with my mates though. Well, yeah, I mean, that is a bit rubbish, isn't it? But we all still have to adhere to the local guidelines wherever we're living, which is exactly what you've been doing actually, Si, for your Fit in Four Weeks campaign and challenge uh, that you started last week. Well, yeah, that is true, actually. Uh, if you haven't seen the video from last Friday, then check it out. There's still time to get on board with the challenge. But in essence, I basically, in order to try and stay happy and healthy, I've set myself a little bit of a target, a bit of a goal, which is to try and get a bit fitter on the bike, even in lockdown, and on not very much training over the next few weeks. Uh, and so, basically, Zwift have got on board as well, which is fantastic. They've supplied one of their top coaches, Kevin Poulton, and he's put together this program of cool workouts, a race every week, a ride every week, and going to see what we can do. So yeah, get stuck in. That's the whole point. You can join us. That's right. And you won't just be joining Sai if you do, because there are presenters from our other GCN channels that are also doing this full week fitness regime. Now, you all started off, Sai, with an epic KOM segment as a kind of test to start with. And I have to admit, you did pretty well oh, at thanks, that test, hey? even, even though you did get smashed by Oscar Puyol. Yeah. But what I must also say and point out is that you look like you were trying a lot harder than everybody else. And that actually comes through when you look at the heart rate figures as well, because your average heart rate was higher than everybody else's. Yeah. But if you did that old 220 minus your age thing, it should actually be lower <laughs> than everybody else's. Yeah, all right. Thanks, Dan. Uh, anyway, whichever way you look at it, uh, I was pretty motivated for the test, and I'm now super motivated for my challenge. Genuinely really interested to see how I get on. And, uh, well, that's brilliant at the moment, isn't it? Um, as I said, we'd love for you to join in as well. Uh, there's a, a page where you can find all the information over on Zwift so you can see what workouts to do and when there'll be group workout sessions. If you want to join me on mine, I'm going to be doing them on Tuesdays and Friday mornings at 8 a.m. UK time. Hmm. I was going to join you this Friday, Si, but then I realised it was Good Friday and therefore a day off work and, you know, I'm busy. I've got people to see, places to go to. <laughs> you mean like your lounge and the kids? Yeah, exactly that. Fair. Hashtag busy. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Well, for everyone else out there, uh, those, are, those are your options. Do get involved. Join in. And also, I'm, I'm after some suggestions for some more races to do as well. Uh, so, uh, so, yeah, that'd be cool. Um, we'll put the link to the sign-up page in the description beneath this video. And another actually bit of Zwift news, uh, they've got an update coming where they're going to be offering an extra world choice. So normally when you log in, you get a choice of two worlds, uh, but there's going to be a choice of three at the moment because so many people are out riding on Zwift. I was going to say, I think they've had to open up another world, haven't they? Because it was starting to get congested. Yeah. Next up, as ever, it is time for your weekly GCN inspiration. This, of course, is where you upload your inspirational cycling photos and videos to the GCN app. We pick our favourite three and all three win a prize. Uh, this week, we will start, of course, with third prize, and that is elite water bottles. You get two Ooh. of them, a value of £12, I've got written here. Uh, the winner of that prize this week is Zoli Bedi, uh, who's written in with Gravel Ride in Pilis in Hungary. Wow. And Hungary is now a destination I need to go and ride my bike in. That looks absolutely fantastic. That does look incredible, doesn't it? I, uh... Well, yeah, what a, what a spot, what a shot. You know what, these inspirational photos are even more important now than they've ever been, I think. Just just yeah, a reminder agreed. of what's out there. Um, fantastic, right, in, coming up in second place then, uh, we got uh, ooh, winning a GCN Stripes jersey, which is pretty, pretty cool. Um, we've got Martin ST who said, uh, while keeping social distance, I somehow persuaded my wife to climb La Dole in Switzerland. Uh, unfortunately, we had to turn back since there was still snow on the path above 1,200 metres, uh, but the view of Mont Blanc was worth it. Uh, that is an amazing view, isn't it? 
yeah. remarkable. Quite the fact. vista, right yeah. there, I must say. Fantastic. Uh, well deserved second place, but we have a deserving winner of first prize this week as well. Uh, they will be getting the indoor training bundle. Uh, so that consists of the fan kit jersey, the fan kit shorts, two elite water bottles, and the matching socks as well. I'll tell you what, Dan, that, a fan kit is exactly what you need on an indoor trainer, isn't it? Put them. <laughs> Yes, brilliant side, <laughs> absolutely brilliant. Uh, anyway, the winner is either Dale New or Dallin New, uh, who put one of the nicest climbs on Grand Canaria, the Serenity Climb. Ooh. And Si and I can attest to that fact as well. And we the can, reason yeah. that we put this in at the winner is because this brings back some very happy memories of our time riding around Grand Canaria. That is a place that you have to go to when you're allowed to. Yeah. Oh, it's a fantastic spot to ride, isn't it? And that, that picture kind of captures it, doesn't it? I also like the fact that yeah. my name is on his handlebars, uh, which is great. Yeah, I, so, I, I, uh, so, yeah, I, I'm quite I, touched at that. I mean, that was a gu guaranteed win, basically. If you've got <laughs> either of our names on your handlebars or on your frame somewhere, you're probably going to win the prize. No one's going to have Dan on the handlebars, mate. Never going to happen. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right, don't forget to get involved ready for next week's show. Uh, even if you're not able to get out on your bike at the moment, maybe if you've got a photo in your archive, uh, we'll let you upload that in the current situation. Yeah, and the other thing to mention, Dan, as well, is that uh, if you can't get out, of course, there are stacks more amazing inspirational photos that are being uploaded to the GCN app each and every day. So, uh, so if you haven't already, download the app because uh, you can easily while away some pleasurable hours uh, sat uh, having a flick through that, can't you? It's now time for Cycling Shorts. Cycling Shorts now, and we're going to start with some tech news. We are. So last week we had the Aero Backpack, courtesy of Rafa. This week, courtesy of Hunt Wheels, we have found out that you will save six minutes on your time over the Dirty Kanza by using Aero Wheels if your name is Colin Strickland. Yes. Uh, now, unfortunately, coronavirus has gone and added four months back onto your Dirty Kanza time because the event has now been postponed until the 12th of September. Yeah, fingers crossed it will take place on that new revised date. I couldn't help but thinking, Si, that six minutes is not a huge amount of time over a 200 mile <laughs> gravel race. No. Good job then that, grab, that uh, deep section wheels look so blooming cool on your bike, <laughs> isn't it? Now there is another iconic race that has had to be moved due to the coronavirus. Uh, not moved in terms of its dates though, but it's had a change of platform and that is the Ram, which is now on Zwift. That's right, yeah. It's gone from racing across America to racing through a custom Zwift environment, they say. Competitors are going to be given 12 days to ride the 3,000 miles or 4,800 kilometers needed. And it's also going to have a new name, Dan. VRAM or VRAM. Yeah. yeah. Well, I can't help but think that Hank would probably only take half that time. By the rate he goes indoors, it would only take him six days. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is he up for it? He is. He is absolutely well up for it. Although he doesn't know he's up for it yet, but he will do shortly when I tell him. <laughs> yeah, nice. Uh, now, thinking of suffering, uh, the Sufferfest. We mentioned last week that there is currently a 30 day free trial. And there's also now six brand new GCN workouts on there as well. Meaning that you can train along with GCN on a session that's been designed by coach Neil Henderson. And the whole thing is fully interactive on your smart trainer, if, if you're lucky enough to have one. Yeah, now if you want to get that 30 day free trial, you're going to need the code. So uh, I'll, I'll whisper it so it doesn't get shared too widely. Uh, all in SUF plan is what you need. Uh, right, now more cool stuff that cyclists are doing to fight coronavirus uh, is called for, I think. And we're going to start with Brompton, who is the manufacturer of, of course, that iconic folding bike. Uh, and they're lending bikes to doctors and nurses here in the UK to help them continue to get to and from work, even when public transport's gone a bit funky. It's another great story, this one, isn't it? As you can imagine, they fairly quickly ran out of their 500 hire bikes. They're currently busy manufacturing 1,000 more. And the really cool thing is that they've said they will continue using these bikes for this very purpose, even once we get back to normality. Yeah, now Brompton have estimated that it's going to cost them in the region of £100,000 to do this. And so they are asking members of the public uh, to help, if you can, just to shoulder some of that burden. And there's a link to their crowdfunding page in the description beneath this video. 
Meanwhile, over in the US, we found at least two schemes that are trying to match up people who've got a spare bike with people who are in dire need of a bike. Of course, public transport links over there as well are much reduced at the moment. Yeah, so Bike Match DC in Washington, of course, and Bike Match NYC, I'm sure you can work out where that is. Uh, so if you live in either of those cities or areas, then uh, and you can lend a hand, then please do so, basically. Also, a guy called Martin Catterall got in touch to say a huge thank you to Muckoff, who have apparently delivered a crate load of chamois cream to a hospital here in the UK to act as like a barrier cream for all those people that are having to wear masks all day. That's cool, isn't it? Hopefully they're not double dipping. Pretty sure the same etiquette applies, whether it's your face or your, your backside. Yeah, so hopefully somebody will tell them that very key rule. Also, you're gonna love this one. So the Italian pro Davide Martinelli has swapped out his Astana kit for some courier clothing. So he is currently volunteering to ride and deliver food and medicine to those most in need of it in his hometown of Lodetto near Brescia in Italy. I do think that's really cool actually, that really like strikes a nerve with me, fair play to the guy. Uh, now also worth a mention uh, is former Trek drops rider Molly Weaver here in the UK. She's recreating the now cancelled Dirty Reaver gravel race, all 130 kilometres of it, in her back garden, meaning that she will do 1,100 laps. Uh, she's doing it for charity, for Women's Aid, and you can get through to uh, her Just Giving page in uh, the description beneath this video. Yeah, well worth a donation, I think, that, just for doing 1,100 laps of yeah. anything at all. Uh, we're going to move on now to Whoop, who, of course, make those wearable devices that monitor your training and your recovery, because they're getting involved in this whole thing as well. But they're doing it through data. So, apparently, the device has yet another trick up its sleeve, and Brooks. that is the fact yeah, that it can monitor your respiratory rate. Oh, and how does it do that, Dan? Well, I'm glad you asked that question, so I'm just about to tell you. So it does it through a phenomenon which is called respiratory sinus arrhythmia. So through the data that the WHOOP users have voluntarily given the company, they have been able to see the early signs of coronavirus because apparently your respiratory rate goes up by 15 to 20%. No way. That's pretty fascinating, isn't it? Uh, right, going to move on to something completely different. Uh, I spotted this last week and thought I'd better mention it. Uh, if you watched last week's GTN show, you'll know that Dan kind of fancies himself as Wolverine, aka <laughs> Hugh Jackman. It turns out that Hugh Jackman might actually fancy himself as a bit of a Daniel Lloyd as well. There might be a budding bromance because uh, here he is riding his bike around New York. Well, that's a Check cool story, isn't it? Yeah, very cool isn't indeed. It just? Do, you reckon, do you think anyone ever goes up to him and says, you look a bit like Dan Lloyd off GCN? <laughs> uh, well, I don't know. I mean, the weird thing is that you might sometimes look like Hugh Jackman when you're on a really good day, uh, but, but I'm not sure Hugh Jackman really <laughs> looks like you. So, uh, so no, Even I doubt it day. somehow. Mm. <laughs> no. No, right, before we leave Cycling Shorts, you may have noticed that over the last couple of weeks, uh, GCN is looking ever so slightly different. Uh, not just different locations, but also the way things are being filmed. Uh, in that they're now being filmed by complete and utter morons, basically. <laughs> Well, there is that, yeah. So we just wanted to say a huge thank you to all of you for putting up with this at the moment. I mean, there are some challenges to filming at home, and a lot of them are interruptions, basically, aren't there? Yes, uh, I've been interrupted by one of my kids, uh, also my dog, uh, but I think you top it, Dan. Uh, you were interrupted by your wife mid-interview, and actually there was a great comment left under that video from uh, CNE, who said, uh, talking to women on a webcam and your wife walks in, we've all been there. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm I not know. sure how much uh, you, trouble you got into there, Lordy, but uh, hopefully it made sense when the video came out. It was all okay, but I think we should probably have a quick look at that moment again. Um, the percentage of hair is getting quite long. Hi there. <laughs> Your wife is there. I feel, I, I feel like that. Who is it? Who was that politician? That, who was that politician that got interviewed live on TV, and then his kid came in, and his wife came in afterwards, and he was like trying to stop them coming in. We'll, we'll definitely be cutting this out of the video. I hope. No, we won't. I like it. It is now time for hack forward slash bodge of the week. You can upload your hacks and bodges, of course, to the GCN app. You've been voting over the past week for the ones we're about to go through now, and they start with this one from T-Steel. 
homemade air shot. Uh, I had some old paintball equipment gathering dust in a dark corner somewhere, so with some slight modifications, I was able to make my own air shot. Spent less than $6 on two fittings, then cut the one to fit an old tubeless valve and squeezed the pipe from a broken pump onto it. Nice. For me, Dan, that is 100% a hack. I can't imagine there's many of us out there with old paintballing kit gathering dust, but if you have got it, then that seems like a, a worthy thing to actually turn it into. Don't you reckon? I think that's great. I think so, yeah. So you're deeming that a lot more sturdy than the plastic bottle that you dissed just a week or so ago. Absolutely. Well, I, I don't know much about paintball guns, but I think they operate at quite a high pressure, don't they? <laughs> yeah, I think. Oh, it's a hack from me as well, then. Yeah, go on, then. What have the viewers said? 78% uh, said it was a hack, so in agreement with us. Yeah, I suspect the 22% that said Bodge uh, probably haven't ever used tubeless before and uh, had that thing yeah. about trying to get a, a really irritating tyre and rim combination to seal. So, uh, yeah. All right, then, uh, moving on. We got this one sent in by JGAM311. Uh, I couldn't find a stand the right height, so I built my own out of some scrap 1x4 planks. Added a shelf for the uh, fan and uh, built a tabletop big enough to put some drinks on as well. That looks pretty neat, doesn't it? I like that. Yeah, it does look very neat indeed. Although I have to say, I think I could probably make something like that myself. <laughs> That's quite a damning indictment <laughs> then. So uh, what are we saying? <laughs> yeah. That's a bodge if you can do it. Well, I mean, you could do, but you know, I will have you know that in design and technology at school, I made a bunny hopper meter and also a very nice rack for my magazines that were all in, um, in order. <laughs> oh, genius. I'm going to leave it there. There's so many places I could go with that. Um, Anyway, perhaps if you would like to see Dan tackle uh, making his own DIY no. fan and computer stand for indoor training, uh, maybe just uh, get involved in the comment section, give the video a like, and, uh, well, you've got time <laughs> in your hands, haven't you, mate? Well, yeah, I'm pretty busy these days, mate. But anyway, what was it, a hack or a bodge from you? A hack from me. Well, it's a hack from me, but, uh, yes, just a slight caveat that you think you can do it, but, uh, no, it's a <laughs> hack. Right, moving oh, on. So what did oh, the viewers say? said hack. 89% said it was a hack on that one. Okay, fair enough. Uh, the next one comes in from Peddler de Sham. Uh, converted phone case on an out front mount. I uh, wanted easy access to the Zwift Companion app when riding indoors, so I took an old iPhone case for $5, glued a Garmin converter for $4 to the back, and write spot on, hey presto. Uh, nothing new here. These have been around for quite a while, and I had one of these myself about four or five years ago that Zwift gave me. Wait well, a minute. No, you can buy those things, but making your own, because like that sounds like a great hack to me they're quite expensive and you don't need something that's going to be oh, like super like robust because your bike's not going anywhere you're indoors i've, I've been making do with some blue tack on uh, on my aerodynamic stem <laughs> so, so that to my mind looks like a hack okay well, well four years ago so si, you couldn't buy them because i used to get lots of questions about where i got it from when it appeared on a video and i used to say i'd made it myself which was a lie because swift had given it to me uh, but anyway i'll go with you on that one i'll say hack as well uh, go on then, and um, what, what have the app users said? Um, yeah, all in agreement, 82% say hack. Nice, all right, fair enough. Uh, next up, we've got this from Scouse Mike. This uh, is, well, a homemade screen shield. Uh, I found it difficult to see the screen whilst riding outside on an indoor trainer, um, so I thought I'd create something to make it better. A definite improvement, materials required, cardboard and duct tape, tools, scissors. Uh, I'd say that's a hack, personally. I mean, uh, Wow. Simple, I don't effective, know about that. elegant. Well, I guess it works, but I don't know if I can deem anything made out of scissors and cardboard as a hack. Oh, no, there's a thought. I'm just trying to think very quickly of something that's really amazing made out of cardboard that's a hack. <laughs> I can't think of anything right now, but I suspect you might be wrong, yeah. Dan. Anyway. All right, get back to us after extreme corner side. I'm going to go with Bodge, actually. All right, then. The viewers. Ooh, 54% hack. I'm going to count that as a win, mate. Yes. Well, you need all the wind you can get, I do, yeah. as do I, so I'm a bit gutted, to be honest. Uh, we've got a video next from And Gamima one um, Sick of drying bikes with oily, rusty air from the compressor, so I switched to using my leaf blower. Um, well, slight overkill, I think, using a leaf blower to dry your bike. Yeah, uh, well, I'm going to confess something here. I really hate leaf blowers. I think they're possibly the worst invention of all time. And so even trying- They're great. No, no, they're not. Why are they great? 
Because, well, I've got a leaf blower and I start with a lawn full of leaves, you can hardly see it, and by the end of it, uh, my neighbour has a lawn full of leaves and you can't see but his. that's precisely the point, is that you're not solving the problem, you're just moving it around somewhere <laughs> else. It's literally like, it's well, like solve, the ultimate my procrastinating problem. device. So even trying to recruit it for something like this that I like, like bikes, I still just think that's rubbish. No, I'm not having it. Okay, so you're saying that's oh, a massive bodge. Bodge. Yeah. All right. Well, 57% uh, of people say that that, that is a no. hack. I don't know what yes. to do with that, mate. I think that's awful. Okay. All right. Well, hopefully we can finish uh, on a positive note. Uh, what's this? Lester's A Topinka. Ooh, homemade rollers. Cobbled together in 20 minutes uh, out of old BMX hubs and some wood. First indoor trainer. Just finished 30 minutes of sweaty training. So. Uh, I think I could make that. I think you might be able to do that, actually. <laughs> so I'm going to say bodge. I, I, well, I mean, it's, it's not as good as Blake's uh, version that he did on GMBN last week, is no, it? No, it's not. There's no resistance as well. That's the thing that gets me. Like, just having your back wheel spinning doesn't really do very much for you. You need a bit of resistance. So uh, maybe if the hubs are old enough, the bearings are cooked and, and there might be some. But, um, mm. yeah. Okay, what are you saying? Uh, well, I'm, I'm on the fence, actually. I kind of think it's a bit of a hack, don't you? Oh, I'm going to um, Well, everybody else seems to be fairly evenly split as well. 52% went for hack and 48% went for bodge on that mm. one. Uh, we are going to finish on a very positive note, so and I'm going to deem this a hack before anybody's even oh, seen it. One more, Here he's pulled it out of the bag. Go on then. Yeah. Uh, literally a bag, it's almost a pun there size. So this is from Edward16 underscore C. Uh, all those free race t-shirts that don't quite fit, finally made into something useful. A padded race wheel transport bag. I love that. That does look quite neat. I'll, I'll give you that. That is uh, very neat indeed. Um, quite a lot of free race t-shirts as well. Clearly a prolific competitor. Yeah, I'd do that. If yeah. someone was kind enough I, to make me one, I'd definitely, uh, definitely have one of those. I'm not sure I'd do it myself, but... Um, okay, so we get both going with hack. Yes, I can't do it myself, therefore it's a hack. Yeah. Well, unsurprisingly, the public are in agreement. 95% of people said that was a hack. That's pretty good going, isn't yeah. it? Fair enough. Yeah, I really um, do like that one. Yeah. Right, don't forget to get involved ready for next week's show. All you've got to do is upload any hacks and bodges you've made yourself or indeed you've seen on the street uh, using the GCN app. Yeah, also, actually, just like with inspiration, uh, sorry, I was nearly caught napping there, but just like with inspiration, there's so many amazing hacks and bodges that we don't put in uh, that are still on the app for you to have a look through, comment on, and indeed vote on as well. So, uh, so yeah, make sure you get involved. It's time now for Caption Competition, that part of the show where you get the chance to win a much coveted GCN Elite water bottle there. Uh, Dan, I've got a black one with me today. What colour is yours? Uh, red and large. Ooh, a large red one. Nice. Uh, right then, <laughs> so the aim of the game is very simple. We'll give you a photo, you submit a witty caption in the comment section down below and we will choose a winner next week. In fact, we're going to start with a winner from last week. First of all, this was the photo we gave you. Well, actually, I say photo, it's plainly a cartoon. The winner uh, was... Fergal Akala, who said, Well, Ollie always fancied himself as a bit of a comic. Oh, that's great. It's a great caption and it's very true in real life. It is as well, very true, I must yeah, say. Yeah. So a thoroughly deserved elite water water bottle for you, Fergal. Uh, get in touch on Facebook with your address and we'll get that sent out as soon as we can. But again, uh, please bear with us and be patient with us at this point because it can be difficult to get to the post office. Right, this week's photo, well, we had to go back through the archives because of course there's no racing going on at the moment. Uh, so we've delved all the way back to the 2005 Tour of Flanders. This is the podium with Tom Bonin and Andreas Clear. I will get you started. Aha, gotcha. <laughs> Not as mobile as you say you are. I like that, mate. I like that very much. Good stuff. Uh, Good facts. That's going to be hard to beat. I'm not going to lie. I mean, yeah. uh, admittedly, the viewers are on top form at the moment. Uh, clearly, uh, isolation seems to be working well for the banter. But, um, but yeah, I think that's, that's a strong contender, Dan. Well done. Yeah, we'll leave your captions in the comment section down below and we'll pick a winner next week. Well, as Cy just mentioned, you lot seem to be really on form at the moment. We've had some belter comments over the last seven days. So we've almost got a bumper edition of that before we get on to telling you what's coming up on the channel. And we're going to start with Hank's 24 hour on Zwift video with this comment from KSK DTR. GCN Italy, you shouldn't ride trainers for more than one hour. Actually, it would be better to make 30 minutes of focus sessions. GCN, 
Let's do 24 hours on a trainer. <laughs> Hold my beer, Hank's doing 24. Uh, yes, uh, well, I don't think we'd recommend doing 24 hours on a trainer, would we? Um, but, um, but clearly it is possible. Um, Michael McDermott, uh, who is always good for a cracking caption, uh, came in with this one. Um, I've never known a man with such little respect for his scrotum. Even those circus acts that lift stuff with their swingers wince at this madman. <laughs> it is very true indeed. He, um, I know. Well, he puts every bit of himself through the mill, doesn't he? But um, He does. He is a glutton for punishment. Is, yeah. uh, as Dennis4523 has pointed out, basically, uh, Hank is just a torture test for GCN <laughs> at this point. I mean, amazingly, we keep coming up to him with ideas that we both think he's going to shoot back at us and say, no way. And he always says yes with the most enthusiasm ever. Great yeah, guy. Yeah. yeah, you can't fault him, can you? Hopefully, uh, hopefully he's going to survive. But anyway, there we go. Yeah, he's going to he's going to love the Vram. Oh yeah, he is going to love the Vram. Uh, right then, under how to motivate yourself, uh, this one uh, from Okimi. Uh, if I was Ollie, just looking at my arms would motivate me to work out more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, well, obviously we can really laugh at that with the arms and the biceps that we have between us. Right. I. <laughs> I don't feel the need to work out with my arms. In fact, I don't think I can work no, out well, with my arms. But uh, no, I was going to say we we really can't even start to work out. <laughs> Uh, meanwhile, underneath your Sisolation Challenge video, Klaus Herman wrote, Your child in the backyard either looks like he's having a great time nowadays, or he is really, really, I mean really bored. <laughs> I did chuckle to myself when I saw that, I must I admit. Did. I think he was having a good time, actually. Uh, just, yeah, I guess throwing your jumper in the air when you're five years old is, is still fun. I guess you grab it at six, probably, don't you? But uh, yeah. yeah, I'm just about to film a video. Just head outside, take this jumper, and um, entertain yourself as your best you yeah. can. Yeah, um, I like this one uh, from Nick W. Actually, uh, who said, uh, "Get your kids involved." Uh, mine is 32 years old and still totally incapable of riding in a straight line. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was underneath last week's show, and you seem to have conveniently missed out a comment that I put oh. in, which came in from Paul Gack. Um, si is one of my favourite presenters, oh, but since he's been presenting from home, it seems that he has really let himself go. Does he comb his hair with an egg beater? <laughs> Maybe we should start a GoFundMe page so that he can buy himself a comb. Um, no, I don't use an egg beater. I don't use anything uh, to comb my hair, unfortunately. Uh, I gave up a long time ago. It, it just does what it wants. Uh, it's just that kind of unruly hair. Um, although, interesting, I'll let you into a little secret. Um, I was quite concerned at how big my hair was going to get over this isolation period. Um, and clearly my wife was too, so she actually stepped up to the plate and, and tried to cut it. Uh, which, uh, I mean, I think it hmm. looks better. And uh, please, no bad comments, because I'm going to rely on her to cut it again at some point before the 12 weeks is up as well. So, uh, so let's have some supportive, well done comments going on. <laughs> well, I too am worried about my hair side, and that is exactly what I was discussing with Cecily before, uh, as Lorraine came <laughs> into the room. Right? Um, but I haven't broached the subject of her cutting my hair for me yet, my wife. Things that you've got great standards uh, anyway. of hair. You see, mine, like, I think you could probably do anything to it and it would still look the same. But uh, but you are going to look pretty mm. pretty funky after 12 weeks. You look like Dan Lloyd <laughs> yeah. circa 2009. Wasn't that your sort of mod era? Yeah. It, well, around that sort of era yeah. it was, yeah. Right, we better crack on with what's coming up Got on the in. channel. Uh, so we'll start with Wednesday, where Connor is going to teach you how to pedal like a pro. And then on Thursday, we're going to what you would eat as a pro if you were doing Paris-Roubaix. Uh, Friday is Sai's second instalment of his Sisolation Challenge over the next four weeks. That's right. Um, Another one, actually, uh, where uh, we were getting a little bit organised and filming stuff for Paru Bay uh, is Sunday's video, where uh, Connor checks out, does some science to see whether or not a gravel bike would actually be faster at Roubaix, uh, taking into consideration its extra speed on pave, but what it might lose out on the road. So that's quite interesting. Uh, don't worry, I haven't forgotten Saturday. Uh, we've got a double header, actually. Uh, great video over on the Tech Channel, which is an unboxing from Cell Italia. But then also on Saturday here on GCN, Ollie and Hank took ketones, and this is what happened. And I don't know what happened because uh, I've not seen the video yet. But uh, maybe Hank rode 385, uh, 785 kilometres uh, on Zwift. That potentially, I guess. Um, and then, obviously, the other thing to mention is that we have our live training sessions for you. Three a week at the moment, Monday, Wednesday and Friday. Plus, the Global Triathlon Network have also got a Tuesday session uh, as well. So make sure you head over there and, uh, and subscribe and you can get stuck into that as well. I don't know whether they're wearing socks, actually, so you might want to check before you, <laughs> before you do subscribe. 
We are also doing our very best to bring you the racing news show each Monday, despite the fact that there's no racing. I've been having help from Killian Kelly, cycling statistician on that. So this week's was all about the hardest classic of them all. So if you haven't caught that already, uh, please make sure you do so. As ever, we are going to finish the GCN show with Extreme yes. Corner. Now, Craig Hardy has also been riding on the rollers outdoors, but not for 24 hours. However, He's been juggling. Ooh, my impressive word. Impressive stuff, that is. It is impressive, isn't it? Mighty sketchy, though. I mean, I've never fallen off rollers from riding no handed, mainly because I've never tried before, but I'm sure it <laughs> really hurt. Like, really hurt. Well, I, un, unlike the uh, the Zwift laptop stand that we had in Hackle Bodge, not only can I not juggle, I also can't ride the rollers no-handed <laughs> either side, so I'd be a bit stuffed trying to do that myself. Uh, you see, I can juggle and I, I can ride the rollers, but fortunately I haven't got any rollers at home, so I'm not going to be able to try for you all. <laughs> Um, so yeah, there yeah. we go, get out of jail free card. Uh, right, that is all for the Brilliant. GCN show for this week. Uh, I'm just off outside to throw my jumper up in the air and uh, have a bit of fun. <laughs> Yeah. Well, stay safe at home, everybody. We hope you are well, and we will see you this time next week with another GCN show. Well, there was a delay. Well, we delayed I, think, now? I think you were a bit slower clapping, if I'm honest. No, but you were way behind me when I... Oh, really? Um, start talking back as soon as I finish this. Okay, I'm starting talking back as soon okay, as you finish. That's, that's, yeah, that's fine. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Got all that on camera for the end, Stefan. <laughs>